Welcome to our presentation on meiosis. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to differentiate between the process of mitosis and the process of meiosis. What is mitosis? If you recall, the purpose of mitosis is to create a two identical daughter cells from an original. So the most important to remember that the identical part of this is the nuclear material in the chromosomes. So what we are saying is creating two cells with exactly the same genetic material as the original cell had. Two identical copies. Now on the other hand, meiosis is the process by which the number of chromosomes is dropped in half in preparation for reproduction. You recall that there are homologous chromosomes, and these are chromosomes which contain the same genetic material, but possibly different genes on them. For example, on two homologous chromosomes, there may be genes for eye color, one for blue eyes and one for brown eyes. In mitosis, these two homologous chromosomes will separate and go to different gametes, sex cells, which may be used to create a new individual. Whether they get the blue-eyed gene or the brown-eyed gene is a matter of chance. Meiosis. Cell division which produces gametes with half the number of chromosomes that the parent's body has. In humans, gametes are haploid. Half the number, haploid. Cells with 23 homologous chromosomes in each. Meiosis takes place in the male and female reproductive organs. The male gametes create sperm and the female gametes create eggs. Meiosis, mitosis produces, mitosis produces two new cells that are identical, while meiosis produces four new cells with half the number of chromosomes that the original cell had. Here we see on the far left four chromosomes. Two homologous white ones, two homologous blue ones. And by the time we're done with the cell division we end up with just two chromosomes in each cell. Again, four to two. Mitosis, we started with four. We copied, they were separated, the two cells then separated and we end up with two cells that have four chromosomes in them, identical to the original cell. Mitosis is cell division, results in two copies of the original cell. Why do cells divide? They can grow old, grow too large, and so organisms may grow. You need more cells sometimes. Now, meiosis, we start off with the same four cells as we did in mitosis. They're copied, but homologous chromosomes are pulled apart, not the chromatids, and then they undergo a second division, which is very much like mitosis. This second division in meiosis is very much like a mitotic division. The chromosomes line up, the chromatids are pulled apart, and we end up with four cells with two chromosomes in each when we started out with one cell with four chromosomes in. These chromosomes at the bottom would be called gametes, ready to join up with another pair of gametes from the other parent to have sexual reproduction. Two diploid cells four haploid cells. The final result. Why meiosis? Diploid 2N organisms like ourselves must produce haploid cells before they can reproduce sexually. Sexual reproduction guarantees the mixing of genes, the random mixing of genes in the next generation. This mixing of, mixing of genes helps uh, give variation to survive changing environmental conditions. 
Meiosis is the process of mixing these genes in random manners to produce new offspring. Step one of meiosis, the chromosomes have to be halved to form gametes. Your diploid number, again we're using humans, is 46 and we would start with one cell with 46 and we will end up with four haploid cells with 23. Cells at the bottom here are would be called gametes. In meiosis step two, the deep D, uh, DNA replicates to form homologous chromosomes. 46 actually goes up to 92 chromosomes, but they're stuck together in that X shape. Then that cell division takes place. Homologous chromosomes are separated. And now we end up with two cells with 46 chromosomes in them, but they're identical. Half of those are identical. And here we have the meiosis. We have four. We double them up to technically there's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, the X is there, each two. And then the homologous pr chromosomes are separated. Remember, there's still X's here now. There's still X's. So they're doubled. They're separated. And then the X's line up again. And the X's are pulled apart. And the chromatids, the single chromosomes, are left in each cell two in each when we started with four. In metaphase one, when the chromosomes are lined up very close to each other, there's uh, uh, the opportunity for crossing over. When these genes are so close that they're touching, sometimes the DNA lets go and new DNA will uh, switch over to the chromosomes. And that's how we can get new, even, even more variation in the chromosomes when we get crossing over. So maybe your blue-eyed, blonde-haired person on all your ancestors were the same way, but a crossing over occurs and now blonde hair and brown eyes occurs. So it's a way of even mixing the genes up a little bit more. Um, and they, they line up, these homologous pairs line up independent of each other. Uh, all homologous pairs line up together, but they all line up independently. And then you can see that yellow and blue that the little piece, say, broke off or, or released and joined back up across and it switched the genetic material. And the source of genetic variation is how um, organisms evolve. It's the law of independent assortment that whether the yellow chromosome goes left or right to the gamete is a 50-50 chance. In anaphase 1, the, the chromosomes line up, but they don't split around the centromeres. The chromatids don't release like they do in mitosis. The homologous chromosomes, they're, they're grabbed by the centromeres, and the X's are pulled apart instead of the chromatids being pulled apart. In mitosis at this point, it would just pull each side of the X apart. But here we're pulling homologous chromosomes apart to each side where when the cell division occurs we're reducing the numbers here in half this is where the haploid condition is set up it's part of the law of segregation the opposite sides and they'll each go to a different gamete segregate separate form a different gamete and then in telophase one the cell uh, will divide and we have haploid situation in each side the chromosomes are still X's, they're still doubled, but those are identical chromosomes, which we can separate now in the second part of meiosis, which is very much like a mitotic division, and we go from two cells then down to four. In mitosis two, again, it's a very similar process to mitosis, but we don't have the DNA rec replication because it's already happened. This is the reduction division. So two haploid cells, 46 chromosomes, are going to go down to four cells with 23. Or in the case of the example here, because it was kind of difficult to draw 23 chromosomes, we start with four, and when we go through this second phase, we're going to end up with four cells with two in each. Step seven results in haploid cells with 23 chromosomes in each. Here we have two on the left and one on the right, but the situation is the same. Uh, 
for humans in 46 and 23. These final cells at the bottom here would be called gametes. Why my meiosis? Two haploid organisms must produce hap to diplo a diploid organism, excuse me, must produce haploid cells before they can sexually reproduce. Imagine if we're humans with 46 chromosomes and we didn't reduce our numbers, the next generation would have 92, the next generation after that would have 184, and so on, and we'd get crazy, we wouldn't be human anymore. So we have to be able to get our normal number, our diploid number, down in half, so that cell and a cell from another individual can join, that's how sexual reproduction occurs, and can then make a normal new member of the species with 46 chromosomes. Sexual reproduction guarantees a mixing of genes. This mixing helps the species have enough variation to survive changing environmental conditions. This is what this uh, micrograph is showing, pollen grains being produced by meiosis in a lily plant. After meiosis fertilization occurs, the joining of two gametes, one from the male and one from the female, in order to form a zygote, a fertilized egg. Example is a sperm fertilizing an egg. You can see the little pictures, the little sperms. And once they've got the fertilization takes place, and that single cell is up to 46 chromosomes, the zygote begins to divide. And we start to develop into a new, new human couple things on basic embryo embryology. The uh, embryo is what the zygote is called after it goes into more than a few cells. One week we have the cleavage. Zygote divides into two cells and then four and then eight and the, the blastocyte, a hollow ball of about a hundred cells, continues now to keep traveling down the fallopian tube. Week two, gestation. It's about eight days, the embryo implants in the uterus, and some very important tissue begins to grow, the amnion, the sac around the embryo, the chorion, which will interact with the uterine tissue to form, form the placenta. That tissue interfaces with the capillary-rich uterus to give blood and food to the uterus from the mother and remove carbon dioxide and waste from the embryo. It's the lifeline between the uh, embryo and the mother. At the end of this period, three primary tissues are formed in the embryo, endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Week three, neuralization. Is during this period, three primary cells begin to differentiate into tissue and organs of the body. All this from one beginning cell created from the joining of two gametes, two sex cells. A hollow dorsal nerve cord begins to develop from the endo ectoderm, and a primitive gut and some blood vessels begin to appear. Week four, organogenesis. During this week, four many organs begin to form. The heart forms and arms and leg buds begin to form. After about eight, eight weeks, the body plan is formed enough to call the developing cells a fetus. Again, this all from one cell formed from fertilization.